Hello everyone and welcome to the Tome of Uselessness. I'm Dan. And I'm Zach. Devin's got a little illness going on, but today our discussion is Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, I think it's called. Yes. Yes. Did you know though if you switch the first two letters, it's The Grimes of Grindelwald. <laughs> It's a movie about cleaning. <laughs> well, the, the movie was quite grimy. <laughs> the movie was something. Well, we before, just watched it. We, we just watched it. We came back from the theater. We are here discussing it. Um, before we get too far into it, would you recommend people go see this movie? I guess. Yeah? I don't know if you're bored or whatever. <laughs> I, I clearly don't have strong feelings about it. Right. I feel like if you're if you're starving for some Harry Potter in your life, I guess go see it. Right. Nah. Sure, and I think there are better <laughs> say written movies, but uh, again, following the first one, the visuals were really cool in this one, mm-hmm. and I actually did enjoy it. But again, it was not like I'm not wowed by it and would be like, man, you got to go see this movie. Something more like recently I saw Bad Times at El Royale. Bad Times at El Royale <laughs> is definitely a movie you should go see instead. Yeah, and I've preached to everybody that comes near me, me that I'm like, go see this movie. <laughs> I feel like, and I, I said it right after we, the movie was over, mm. I could not tell you what happened in that movie. I couldn't tell you the plot of that movie. Yeah, and I felt... In this... a concise way. Um... But it it was an enjoyable experience because the costumes are pretty. Yeah. The actors are pretty good. I mean, the dialogue's fine. Sure. Yeah. The action's kind of cool. Yeah. The special effects are good. The music is good. It's a it's a well produced, high quality film. But it that's it. <laughs> yeah, like, there's a lot of gloss and polish and what have you, but the substance is a little lacking. Um, which is too bad. And I definitely felt it in this one that compared to the first one, this doesn't end. Like the first one had a clear beginning, middle, and end. This one had a beginning and then just kept going. It and then the movie really ended. Really have a beginning. It had it kind all of had a, middle. Yeah. <laughs> it was all middle. Sure. To go back to what I was saying, I'd I'd give it like a medium recommendation. Like Devin kind of said. Uh, if you're in more, you want some more Harry Potter content, this was all of that. <laughs> There's nothing else really interesting right now. Yes, that's also... Out, so maybe just go see it. Yeah, it's almost like it's perfectly timed release yeah. in that sense that there is really nothing else out right now. There's the Nutcracker one that came out, but it's a different audience, I think. Yeah. Um, like I said, Bad Times at El Royale has been out for a long time. There's yeah. that Overlord movie I'm kind of interested in. It's like World War II uh, zombie Nazi experiments. It sounds kind of fun. I didn't even hear of that. Exactly. It's a little like low. There's no There's no Star Wars. There's no other Marvel movie coming out. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess that worked really well in their favor that yeah. Star Wars got moved from, like, um, the Han Solo movie got moved from December to May. Yeah. But anywho. So. Yeah. Okay. We'll get into it a little more here. Uh, Eddie Redmayne, Johnny Depp is back. Uh, almost all the same cast is all back, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, like, everybody's the same, which that's cool. And, again, before we continue on, this was something I recently found out, is they want to make five of these movies. Five. Which I couldn't believe when I read that. I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was, so we got another three coming. Yeah, but I will say, this in, in the favor of this movie, it had a consistent tone. Compared to the first movie... Had wildly tones all over the place. I think I discussed that probably in our previous Harry Potter yeah. episode. This one, the tone was consistent the entire time. Even the, the couple times where they do some fun beast stuff, there was still it's minimal wasn't, compared yeah, to what else is going. It wasn't as all whimsical and fun because it wasn't. We weren't seeing it through the lens of his hum, his Muggle friend, almost in a sense, right? Right. Like this time, it's like you know they escape on this Chinese dragon thing and or cat dragon thing, and yeah. Yeah, but it's like an intense scene, like, oh man, they're in the ministry, how are they going to get out? Yeah. It wasn't like a whimsical, oh, i got to capture my fun dragon beast. (laughs) Yeah, I felt like, and I've already told Dan this, but I felt like this movie was a bunch of ideas that they put in a blender, 
pushed it and didn't put the lid on, pushed pulse, <laughs> and then whatever sprayed out was what was the movie going to be. Because it just felt like there was so many ideas that were kind of disjointed and Mm -hmm. it didn't really have a lot of continuity going through it and there was like oh we want to we want to come back to that credence character yeah so we got to shoehorn him in oh i got this cool idea that nagini is actually a lady sure so we got to shoehorn that in (laughs) but we're going to drop it almost immediately because She's just there. We the just the we don't have enough time to tell her story. Sure. And then it's like, oh, we got to put Dumbledore in, so let's shoehorn that in. Well, let's <laughs> shoehorn um, Newt and Letta's relationship in because they yeah. were it was kind of talked about in the first one, and let's put this their let's, budding romance sort of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's put another romance in there. Let's add another romance in. Like, Actually, and that was interesting because I was really with the movie pacing wise until they did the flashbacks. I thought the flashbacks hurt the movie more than it helped helped. (laughs) because it was like oh she goes and finds the desk she finds a little inscription you're like oh that's kind of nice and then they do this flashback scene it was like it was fine without that flashback scene (laughs) do you ever wonder if they put scenes in movies specifically because they're like this would work so cool in the trailer maybe entirely possible the scene where newt um, goes against the Bogart in yeah, the yeah. flashback and it turns into a desk yes. is featured in the trailer. Oh. And it works really good in the trailer because it kind of, it immediately kind of shows you what his character is. Right, because when he says, I don't want to work for the Ministry of Magic. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want a desk job, right? Yeah. So, I feel like, like, sometimes they just, JK has an image or a scene pop in her head, right. and then she tries to find a way to make it fit in the movie. Well, and I was going to say, going back to what you were saying with the multiple ideas, is that then that makes me almost curious, is what did the screenplay look like before it had to get trimmed to be movie time? Right, yeah, <laughs> right? totally. Because there must be more, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, how much more was there in certain areas that they could have either trimmed to make it flow better in, in ways that I think anyway but again that's just me because like I said the flashback scenes that felt hurt there was two times where there was two sets of exposition right after each other and you're like dude we just sat through an exposition scene oh my <laughs> was, god the whole that like, were both flashback scenes and it was like oh my god we just did this <laughs> the Letta Lestrange slash Credence being her half brother but it turns out it's not oh yeah, like, yeah she thinks maybe it might she, she might thinks be. he might be yeah that storyline could have been completely cut for me, and I don't think it would have. The movie would have <laughs> suffered. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just, again, the, I felt like there was a lot bogging this movie down. Sure, and again, I think we talked a bit about this previously. It's like, and that's what I was hoping for was for this one. That I was like, maybe they, hopefully, they brought somebody in to help J.K. with the script because the previous one was her first attempt at screenwriting, and yeah. there was again great world building, great all this other stuff, but then it was not streamline not a tight story yeah. this one I was like hopefully they brought somebody in a little bit to just be like well we'll just take a look no they use the blender idea <laughs> yeah <it is. laughs> because it, yeah the, that again was like in a book totally could have been a different and work yeah and in a book <laughs> is you can write things differently sure. right you can kind of have a chapter that's dedicated to whatever. Yeah, you can have a character be like, oh, I remember back 20 years ago, and then it's literally half a book, and that's yeah. fine. <laughs> There's, um... Okay, so I mentioned Nagini earlier. Yes. So Credence, at the beginning of the movie, is in a circus. Yeah, before Devin continues, and I think... I thought he was dead. I thought he was film. dead, too. Yeah, and then they, they do a scene with Newt, and they're like, oh, this boy, blah, 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 and I was like, he's dead. <laughs> and then they show him, no, he's in a circus. No, he's in the circus. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. You joined the circus with your dog that you thought was dead too. <laughs> so yeah. um, he's in the circus and immediately when we're introduced to him in the circus, he's going to escape the circus. Yeah, he's like, we're escaping tonight. With Nagini. Yeah. And what could have helped is if if they had to have that in there, <laughs> is if we had... Like, if they want to use the flashback or whatever, but have Credence kind of, even if it was just kind of quick, cut together, being, Mm. like, dusting himself off. Yeah. Being like, oh, hey, a circus, and then joining it. Sure. And then maybe, like, one or two scenes where he's like, what's your name? My name's Nikini. Yeah. Oh, I mean, why is he, why is that dude so mean to you, Nikini? Oh, I don't know, he hates me. Oh, I won't hate you, I love you, or whatever. <laughs> no, absolutely, I totally, because I have no idea why they're friends. 
are how they their friends? friendships. Are yeah. they lovers? Like, yeah. what is going on? They're why just... does he want? Why does he need her to escape with him? He could just yeah. escape on his own. And then at the end, <laughs> right. when he when he goes with when he chooses Grindelwald over Nagini, yeah, over escaping with Nagini, <laughs> that would have been heartbreaking. Sure. If we had some <laughs> sort of context for their relationship. Yeah, because we have we have none. We have literally, oh, we're escaping, oh, we escaped. And then we have a couple scenes where they're together and they're like, they're like, meet the old lady that yeah. that put him up for adoption. And she's like, greetings. Yeah. And then oh, you were a nice boy. Sorry, we yeah. had to do that. And then they hug and shit, right? Yeah. And then <laughs> but like, if... If there was some sort of relationship that had been built, yeah, that would have been a sad moment, right? And in the same vein, when Queenie chooses <laughs> Grindelwald over Jacob, Jacob, I don't yeah, know what I'm saying, I'm um, again, that would have been heartbreaking in the previous movie, yeah. But this whole movie, she just acts like a fucking wingnut, <laughs> and you're just like. All right. Yeah. That maybe it's better to go. With <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're wigging out a little lady. <laughs> like, if there was some, because there's a scene where, basically, she's enchanted Jacob to want to marry her. Yes. Because he doesn't want to marry her because he doesn't want her to go to jail. Yeah. In America, they would go to jail because they they shouldn't have even a relationship. Yeah. That's cool. Whatever. And then they kind of split up because of that. And then there's this scene where she thinks she sees him, and she kind of goes after him, and then she, I guess then she hears thoughts, she gets yeah. overwhelmed and sits down and cries. But it would have been nice if there was some sort of, like, indication that she could get overwhelmed by other people's thoughts. Yeah, so even that she could control it well enough. Yeah, like, the first movie, that was never <laughs> a thing. Yeah. Up until that point, that was never a thing. So if there was some sort of indication so that there was some tension with the audience when we see her alone and then she's getting overwhelmed, Mm. then that would be like, oh, shit. Like, oh, that's so horrible for her. But instead, we're like, oh, she's fine because she's always fine. Yeah. Why is she crying? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, and then just it was also like... Because she meets Grindelwald, and she knows who he is, because she was involved in the previous I movie. did miss the bit where she was meeting him, because I went pee. No, but you came back just when they started to meet. Oh, okay. She was there initially in having tea with the other lady, who I don't even know her name, French woman yeah, in green. Yeah, who the fuck was that? Yeah, French woman in green. Okay. And then she leaves. She's and then, pretty. Sure, yeah, she was. She very cool classy. Hat. Cla- yeah, nice hat, good hair. And, nice you know, makeup. Yeah, but then... Don't know who she is. I have no idea either. She's a baby killer. Yes. She kills a baby at one <laughs> she, point. She did kill Off a screen. baby. <laughs> Off screen indeed. And then, yeah, and then Grindelwald comes in and he's just like, we should be able to do what we want, love who we want. And then she's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I was like, I get it. But she also knew that in Britain you were allowed to marry muggles anyway. Yeah. So her whole, like, we should be ruled, ruling the humans so that I can marry the man I want. I mean, she was already allowed in Europe. <laughs> like, yeah. She was a cool character in the first movie. Yeah. They took that away from her <laughs> in the second movie. Yeah, she was. They just kind of made her like a... Like, if they were like, oh, she hit her head, then I'd be like, oh, she got brain damage. It yeah. just makes sense now. Well, and I thought there was going to be more with the, the French woman that maybe they had some conversation, like woman to woman about some stuff, and then yeah, Green and Wald, and then... Girl talk. Girl talk a little bit. Yeah, exactly. No, but, you know, then she was like, oh, I love somebody, and then it went, he died in some way because of whatever magic rules, and then she's like, yeah, that sucks. Like these magic rules are stupid. Yeah. Then again, it would have made it could have helped it along, instead of just. Yeah, you know what? It, Wizard Hitler's got a good idea there. <laughs> I'm gonna go with him, even though the guy I love saying, "Hey, we shouldn't do this." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like at least Wizard Hitler made a good point. Though, yeah. No. Right? I, like yeah, that. That's the whole point. Is when when it was cult time. Yeah. <laughs> And you showed them the World War II that was going to come up and how horrible it was going to be. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty compelling argument. Yes. Good job. (laughs) Too bad no one else can make any sort of argument in this movie that makes sense. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, moving on from Queenie to her sister Tina. She's in Paris. She's an Auror. 
And I guess now what she's... What about her boyfriend? Who's yeah, her? apparently she has a boyfriend, at least it's mentioned, but then he's not there. Because that, that's what I was expecting. I was like, okay, they'll be in their Paris together, yeah. and then he'll Newt's going to meet him, it'll be weird, but that's cool. You know, he might die through the adventure, something long, but he's not even mentioned. She, she's just like there by, on her own. Yeah. Wizarding it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she was doing. Yeah. And she's I, so mad because she saw that Newt was engaged in a... But it was because, like, it was, there was a, a misprint, yeah. misprint or something. or Yeah, but so she's there, and then I like how she meets that guy, and he's like, well, I can show you proof that something's going on. And I'm like, is this, like, you're an or, I get your your job is to be investigating, but aren't you supposed to also be suspicious of things? Not just immediately be like, yeah, totally, let's go check that out. And then, like, get captured. Or, but I guess she was saying that, Did oh, Did I no. miss a scene where she got captured? They never showed it, no. So it was like literally, it, it, literally, she's just like, yeah, let's go check it out, and then it just moves on. And then when they find him, it's kind of almost like in Marvel and like the uh, the first Avengers where Scarlett Johansson's getting, and she's like, oh, my interrogation's going perfect, even though she's the one who's captured. That's oh, yeah. kind of because she's like, I was interrogating him, and he was giving me information, and she's in jail, right? So, so she got captured on purpose. Yes, I think that was the implication. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I just thought I thought she was living in that sewer. Yeah, no. Initially, that that's what I thought too. Is that he's like, oh, yeah, she's in like a safe house, and I was like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, he was she. She captured. He got. She got captured. Um, Why was there writing on the wall? I assume that was crazy guys writing, like to track things or something. Yeah, no. Again, we didn't get any explanation. <laughs> And then they're even mentioned because uh, that they, they uh, Newt and Tina they capture that guy and then he's got a parasite and they're like oh man water dragons have this parasite and I was like whoa we're gonna see a cool water dragon nope no water dragon in the movie <laughs> yeah what how did he get that oh was it from the eye drops yeah no no the, I assume he was putting the eye drops in to neutralize the venom that from the parasite that was giving so him. he knew he had a parasite yes. Oh. Yeah, but he probably didn't... he didn't know probably know how to get it out because he's not like Newt Scamander who knows everything. His yeah. Ah. Uh, so yeah, and then Tina they oh eventually team up with the with Newt. So Newt's thing in the beginning, which I thought was kind of cool, he's at the Ministry of Magic, and then he's like wants to get travel papers, <laughs> and then they're like, nope, you're not. We're not letting you off Britain again, buddy, <laughs> unless you work for the Ministry of Magic trying to track down Credence. And he's like, no, because I don't want to kill the kid because he's not, it's it not his fault. It would have just been Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Newt's <laughs> Commander versus the Red Tape. <laughs> versus bureaucracy. Yeah. And then also, like you said, it goes back to that scene where he doesn't want a desk job. He doesn't want to be controlled by the government. And Fair enough. He wants to go write about his beasts. <laughs> right? That's it. Yeah. He wants to write his book. Yeah. But I did like when he goes back home, we get to see that he's like he's got his whole zoo. Not, yeah. It's not just like his travel case. He's okay, got like an actual slow zoo. down, slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he has the best assistant ever. Yes. Who asks him to take his shirt off. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, no, she was good. I, mm-hmm. I would actually have preferred a movie about that. Just about him and her running their farm. Yeah. Like, that would have been cool. Well, and I think I said this about the first one, that is like... The fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, that's the concept. Just have this man running around finding Fantastic yeah. Beasts, which was supposed to be the the character line. And then, you know, there's a couple beasts in this, but it was like... Because they couldn't animate the beasts as much in the original Harry Potters. I get it. But now they can. Yeah. And it's they're running wild everywhere, and they're doing cool stuff, and it's just like, yeah, let them go encounter beasts. <laughs> you know, I think that Harry Potter movies... Part of the reason why they're successful is because there's a good balance of small magic versus Mm -hmm. big magic, right? Sure. So we get, like, the Weasley's house, and we get, like, the, like, day-to-day ways so they make magic part of their life. Owls and papers. Owls and everything. Gifts and stuff. And there's all these different things that could be turned into merchandise. Sure. Or whatever, right? But in Fantastic Beasts, it's just big magic yeah. the whole time. It gets it's loud, and then it gets <laughs> louder, yeah. and then it gets louder. Like there's no, there's no down to make the big stuff seem even more important. Yeah, it's all big. It's all important. It's all 
everything depends on everything every single time, and it gets a little bit stale because of it. Well, and I was going to say, yeah, and that, uh, I actually really did like that they can depict magic now as doing so much cool stuff. Oh, yeah. But, like you say, it was, it's just like even the elevator down to the French Ministry, it has this big whole like ironwork thing effect where it's like in the first area, they just go in the phone booth and they go down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that worked. That was fine. We don't need the nice big vine thing every time. It was cool, but like, <laughs> no, but that's just what I'm give saying. us it's a, just like... a little bit of a break occasionally, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just all... All in your face all the time. Well, and we just don't get to spend enough time with Newt in the scene because uh, he he has this kelp monster that he go he fight yeah, uh, yeah. that he helps, and then you know he's got some things. We get some baby. What are they called? Nefflers. Nefflers, and you know, so there's a few things there, but it's just again, and uh, now not as much time with that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Instead, we just get everything. Everything all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he he's denied his papers, and then Queenie and Jacob show up at his house. There's an argument. She leaves, and then they find and, out okay, so Tina's this, in Paris. <laughs> this part, I didn't know why Queenie decided to come to his house. Yeah, it seemed very out of place. The fact that Queenie had enchanted Jacob was kind of like a big deal, but then that gets glossed over yeah. and skipped over so quickly. <laughs> Jacob and Newt's, like, reunion should have been kind of a big deal. Yeah. Because as far as J- as Newt knew, Jacob was still obliviated. Yeah, didn't remember him at all. But he obviously remembers him, so that should have been something that was, like, skipped over. And then it was just like, oh, um, Tina's not here, she's in Paris. And then Newt's like, oh, let's go to Paris. They, yeah. Like, that's it. That's just it, right? Yeah. It's like, it, it didn't seem like a good enough motiv- <coughs> motivation for me. Right. Because Newt was not allowed to leave Britain. Mm. But he wasn't allowed to leave Britain before, and he knew she was in America. So he could have gone to her in America, but I don't know if it was just like seeing Jacob and Queenie again made him have to see Tina in that moment. Right. It was just, it felt like, again, like all the characters' motivations just didn't make any sense. Yeah, you know what could have worked is that if somehow they hinted that they knew Credence was in France and then he's kind of like, oh, I should try to go like maybe stop them from murdering him. Oh, and Tina's in Paris. Maybe that's a good place to start in France. Yeah. And then there'd well, be like a duel. Maybe because of the scene with Dumbledore. Because Dumbledore... Right, Dumbledore to, tells him. To go to Paris. So maybe that was something. Right. I guess, yeah. Yeah, because that was a good scene. But I totally forgot <laughs> even the contents of that scene. <laughs> yeah, because so much happens in this movie. Yeah, that no, I, that actually is. Yeah, because he tells him. He's like, oh, you got to go there and you got to go find him. And here's a card to Flamel's house. Yeah, a <laughs> safe house. A safe house. If AKA you want Flamel's a cup house. of tea. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But they didn't even have tea. <laughs> <laughs> they had special alchemist tea. No, so yeah, so they go to Paris. And before that, there's the scene, like Devin said, when uh, Nagini and Credence break out. And then... They track him down. Okay, so... And they track down wait, Buddy who captured Tina. Stop, stop. Before that... <laughs> yeah. In the scene where they... Where Nagini and Credence leave the circus... Yeah. There is a big, stupid thing that escapes... Oh, like a cat dragon monster? The, the cat, Chinese one? Yeah. yeah. And, like... The circus guy's just like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this. He doesn't even go after it. He just packs it up. He's like, you know what? I'll conveniently not try to get my very rare monster back so that he can befriend Newt Scamander later. uh, uh, A Japanese Kappa escapes, which is like a Japanese water demon creature. Which we never hear from again. We never see again, unfortunately, which I would have liked to see. The little bat things that shoot sparks that opened all the cages, presumably, also escape. Yeah. And we never see again. And like, what's left in his circuit? Yeah, and then the Chinese cat dragon also escapes, which has, like, chains and, like, this big, like, magical handle thing on it that I assume he'd be able to track it down and or 
wouldn't you be responsible for your Chinese cat dragon <laughs> that escaped? Like, wouldn't the ministry be like, hey, you let that creature out? He just Well, like... <laughs> I assume he had it illegally. Yeah, that's what that... <laughs> But then wouldn't there be a minister person to show up? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. This shit happens all the time. Yeah, they're just chilling. It's, it's France. France. They, yeah, they're just like, well, uh, I'll have my cafe first, then we will chant <laughs> this down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the bureaucracy is a little odd. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's weird. It was funny though, yeah, because it's just like, oh, Paris is done, and they just pack up and take off. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, they're never coming back here again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Newt, uh, there was some, that was a cool little fun moment with uh, Newt trying to track him down. He does some wizarding stuff, because it's always his, his wizarding things are in a different manner, because he, he uses beasts and other ideas, right, that people don't use. Yeah, and then <laughs> so they track down Tina, and they capture Buddy, who captured Tina. We find out that he has some kind of oath that he made. I'm sure we're missing stuff. Oh, of course. <laughs> and then basically, like Devin said, the pacing is just like, oh, we have to go here. We go to the ministry in France, and then because they somehow know about the Lestrange box, that it's somehow related. Because Buddy gives his ex... No, he doesn't give his exposition until later. No, or through, yeah, she knew. She was through like... Through the whole movie, it hinted at that Credence is Leto Lestrange's brother that yes, died. that died. Yeah. yeah. And then... And Leto's like, it's not, because it turns out that Leto killed her brother. Yes. <laughs> well, she didn't kill her brother. She switched her brother with another brother. Yeah. Another child was screaming that not wasn't screaming in the boat, so so she could like I could sleep, and yeah. then the boat went down at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And then. And then the, the other baby drowned. Drew drowned. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, they go to and the ministry. And she's like, "I'm a monster." I'm a monster. And I'm like, "What the fuck? You didn't drop it overboard." That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting wor- something worse as well, but I guess it was the crushing knowledge that if she hadn't swapped babies, oh, would, that she'd still have her brother. The brother would have survived. Right. And then. Grindelwald has his little rally. Yeah. In the, uh, you know, it's always cool too with the wizarding world how it's like, oh, it's kind of like, you know, very Neil Gaiman, right? Where you can open a door and then you're in another world. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Into something bigger, right? Because they're, they're in some of this amphitheater <laughs> below, yeah. like the, uh, the graveyard. Oh, I just thought that was just there. No, I assume it's again, like. No, I thought it was just there. <laughs> it's just a big amphitheater in the. Yeah. Under this this grave, sure. Yeah. Is England or France? It's Paris. Yeah, they have yeah. all those tunnels and stuff like that. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I I accept it. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Probably tons of amphitheaters in Europe underground. Yeah, just waiting for a wizard, <laughs> wizard Hitler to, to have a nice little speech. He gives a nice little speech to all these people, and then the ministry guys are like, because it's led by Newt's brother. And yeah. Dumbledore told his brothers, like, don't go when he has his rally. It'll be a bad thing. It's, you know, but he's going to go anyway, do his job. And then Newt's brother's like, don't attack the people. We don't want to look like we're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> yeah. Know? And then they attack the people. Well, and the one person was going to attack the one order and he defended himself. It's but ambiguous. he didn't have to kill her. I don't, it was yeah, a, that was this. It, it was he's a, like, he used minimal force. Yeah. It was a green flash of light, yes. which means he used one of the unforgivable curses. Yeah. Just flippantly. The, the dead one. <laughs> the dead one. Yeah. Just flippantly just murders her. He uses Abadabadabada. Instead of just disarming her or whatever, you know, a little Expelliarmus. Yeah, no, he fucking murders <laughs> her for yeah. some reason. Unless he took his wand out and then the French girl actually did the killing spell but made it look like it came from his wand. Oh. Because, you know what? That, that would be perfectly done by a charismatic leader false flag attack. Yes. Yeah. Also, it would, that my theory is no more out there than anything else that was in this movie. <laughs> Fair enough. And then, uh, basically, after his speech, he creates this, like, cool, you know, blue, blue ring of magic fire. And then he's like, hey, if you're a true follower of me, you'll be able to step through, not burn, and then, you know, join me in my fight. Etc. Some yeah. people do, some people don't, some people die. So why does Letta get engaged to Newt's brother? I don't know. Because she doesn't seem to like him that much. She seems to like Newt. She likes Newt. Yeah, that's where it well is. It's not that she doesn't like Newt's yeah, brother. But we don't get enough scenes again to understand. There, she, there's some sort of some dialogue where she's like, oh, we really like having you over for dinner and blah, blah, blah. And they seem like they're good You know, if but... there was like a scene where... 
Letta had tried to kiss Newt and he didn't let her. Mm. And then it, they had kind of grown apart. Right, when they were like younger. Yeah, when they were younger mm. and they had kind of grown apart. And then like, I don't know, she, her, his brother had like befriended her and then sure. whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's no, they've given us. They're just like, this is the way things are. Well, because even at the end of the movie... Don't look at it too closely. Yeah. Well, even at the end of the movie, when she's turning, the two brothers are there, and she's like, oh, I love you. He, she's looking at Newt. Yeah. She's, at least she, in my she, eyes, when she was... I like, thought she was saying it to Newt and yeah, not... Yeah, and not... Uh, uh, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? I don't know, but it started with a T. I think it's like Theseus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Theodore? Theseus? No, I think it's Theseus. Uh, yeah. And then she walks through the fire and... Oh no, she fights back, right? No, she, she fights back. She, fight, she fights them off so then they can escape. Sorry, yeah. that's what it was. I think this, it was a cool effect. The So that it, it turns into this three basically blue flame dragons. Yeah. And then Flamel's there. And they're all like, we can stop it all together in a circle. Magic. Okay. T- a friendship. <laughs> Here's the thing. Flamel didn't need to be there. No, definitely not. They could have done the exact same effect. Everything else the exact same. Without Flamel, then. yeah, like he worked fine as the device to get Jacob to go there because he had a crystal ball, and Jacob's like, "Oh, where is that?" Because he sees Queenie, and he's like, "Oh, it's yeah, in Paris." That, that was thing. pretty sloppy. No, I was fine with that because then he leaves, and then he sees all the death and destruction, and I was like, "Oh." oh. And then um, Jessica from The Daily Show tells him, "Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's go. who it was." Yeah, <laughs> thought I recognized the voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah she. Did. I remember seeing a big article that she had a part in it. Oh, really? But that was her part. That was her part. You don't even fucking see her. <laughs> yeah. She's a picture in a book and then tells yeah. him to go. Yeah, uh, it's fine. I, I, I was I was like, he doesn't have to be there. I totally agree. But it was fine that he was because they would have done the same thing anyway. <laughs> Nicholas Flamel did not need to be in this movie. No. They could have easily. Have... No, I, I liked it again as a little cameo thing where he meets Jacob briefly and then they move no. on. Because Jacob doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know that he's a famous immortal alchemist. That's true. So he was just kind of like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that's a good little comedy moment. Then he moves on. Yeah. So yeah, they they do this magic circle thing, prevent the fire from... Because this is like what Devin was saying. This is, this is big magic. This was supposed to be stuff that, you know, only Dumbledore was doing and like the craziest, you know... Things and it's like, ah, eh, it's just six of them together, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> big magic. It, big magic. It, it, the, the magic in these two movies so far is so far beyond anything they've ever depicted in the previous yeah. Harry Potter movies. It, like, they repair I'm New just, York with <laughs> waving their wands. I feel like it would have been a lot easier to beat Voldemort. Yeah. <laughs> like, before it even got to the point where Harry Potter was involved, if they had all been. Well, and like Newt Scamander. Yeah. There. <laughs> well, like I was saying, it could be because when World War II does happen, maybe a lot of wizards die and a lot of like knowledge gets lost. Fine. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, they they fight back. They stop the Chinese or the not the Chinese. They, they stop, stop the Chinese. They stop the Chinese cat dragon. No, they already did that earlier. No, they stop the the fire dragon, and then the movie ends essentially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're like, what's there, there, We get another scene with, with Grindelwald, with Buddy, and it's revealed that Credence, for some reason, this is literally for some reason, because I don't know my Harry Potter lore very well, but I don't think this is ever hinted at, is that he's D- Dumbledore's brother. Yeah. <laughs> half-brother or whatever. Another half-brother, because he's already got the one. Yeah, because it's not the goat fucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just... And then he gets a wand and then blows up half a mountain. <laughs> yeah, and then credits. And then credits. And it's like... What? <laughs> yeah, I just... <laughs> I feel like what is the question that this movie made me ask? Yeah. Also, like, how old is Newt Scamander's brother? I think it would be the younger one. Okay. Maybe. So, like, 20-something? Mm, that's an interesting question, because they, they both look similarly aged. Yeah, but Newt's got to be, like, 20-something as well. Sure, of course. So not like not super experienced as an orer, but for some reason yeah. leading a fucking team of orers. Yeah. Yeah. Where was the other guy? <laughs> that orer guy. Yeah. <laughs> he he was like, no, I'll just chill in Paris, in in the ministry here. You go. Out you you go do you go do the job there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you gotta get the. The, the young, young bucks yeah, the out young, there. Yeah, the young kids out there, the hotheads. Oh wait, you know what? This is. 
this job against this this wizard that's like super fucking intense that we had to remove his tongue so that yeah. he would stop talking to people <laughs> and with twenty seven guards on. Let's just let's send the new guy out. Yeah. Well, they they were their plan was not to confront Grindelwald at the time anyway. Yeah, but and it could be maybe that that guy is leaning towards Grindelwald's policies and just doesn't want to play his hand. Right. Right. Because there was the other guy weird. earlier from the British Ministry who was helping Grindelwald. That's right. I forgot um, about that. Yeah, because he when when Eddie read when Newt was like, no, I don't want to track down. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> that guy. That other guy showed up and he's like, I'll do it. And then he helps Credence get away. Essentially, he protects him, and then he disappears from the movie. Yeah. Because Johnny Depp, yeah, there, Grindelwald has that scene with him where he's like, you got to keep protecting him, you know, just keep doing it. And then he never shows up again. <laughs> also, how come Grindelwald's henchman, mm-hmm. what was his name? Oh, the guy who burns? Yeah. Crow or Crow or something like that? Yeah. So what was his deal? I don't know. Again, this could be something that it was like if you knew your Harry Potter lore a lot closer. Because, like, but... did he betray him? I th- He didn't do anything... That was why I was curious why he burned. It was like, yeah. he just kind of maybe... Is he maybe, just not like a true believer? Yeah. But, the, you know, everyone questions but every he, policy. <laughs> but he was like less of a believer than Queenie was because Queenie walked through fine. Yeah. And less of a believer than Credence was because Credence walked through fine. No, I, I, I again, it's, it's unexplained. <laughs> like, did he do something bad? I don't recall anything in the movie of him, like, yeah, secretly giving away information or you know like, oh yeah like he has a drop box and he gives something to the ministry so they know where Grindelwald's doing something no no nothing like that in the movie <laughs> he just kind of doubted for a moment because he said the great Albus Dumbledore or he tripped over that or he was like oh you mean Dumbledore sorry not the great Dumbledore <laughs> Jesus also like why is Dumbledore great again yeah we were talking a bit about this before like he, okay, so okay, he's the best wizard ever in the whole wide world. Yeah, but one like, of the most powerful, anyway, that we know of. How do we know that? As far as we know, for Dumbledore's history, he became a teacher at Hogwarts. Yes. So, like, what great wizard thing did he do as a teacher? <laughs> Was he just that good of a teacher? He's that good. That's it's, it. That's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, my answer is again my own theory is that he's probably a descendant of Merlin. Yeah. Um, making him okay. some sort of powerful wizard. So but... that's fine. Is that common knowledge in the wizarding world? Yeah, that's an, also an interesting thing. You think they would track that? Because I could <laughs> that kind genealogy. Of, I could kind of see um, people thinking Dumbledore is the great Dumbledore post his duel with Grindelwald, right? right? Because you're like, okay, they fought him and he won and it was hard for him or whatever. Yeah, if I recall... Because they have a big duel in the books, I think. Yeah, I think it was still when they were younger. Yeah. Right? So, that I could understand. But, yeah. like, in this movie, that hasn't happened yet. No, that's what I'm saying. I think it has happened. No, but they did the blood oath when they were younger. To fight, to yeah. not fight each other? I thought maybe it might have happened afterwards. I don't know. I think the I think it's coming up. It's coming up. I think that's going to be the climax of movie five. That's true. They're going to drag this shit out for <laughs> four or three more movies. Yeah. Um. So I think that's what the climax is going to be. It's going to be the big fucking magic fight. Sure. But I at this time I don't why know he, why yeah. he's great right now. Right. Uh. And again. This is all because of prequel type stuff or whatever. Or it's just, yeah. yeah, they should have just been. Again, it was. Yeah, no one could have even. They could have mentioned something somewhere that he did something. Yeah. Eh. He's. We. It's, it's again, it's prequel stuff where it's like, we know he's a powerful wizard, so he's a powerful wizard. I wonder if like, this is like all um, in the short stories she writes from Pottermore. Oh, I don't know. She writes other stuff. Yeah, no, she writes short stories, like prequel shit. That's fine, but is this? It's the same thing like the prequels, where like the Star Wars prequels, where if you want to, if I'm just watching your movie, I don't understand it. Exactly <laughs> right. right? Like, like our, this audience needs some background. Yeah. Why is Dumbledore great? It's an interesting thought, because yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, and it's well, it's not told us told in this movie why he's great. Yeah, because the first movie being in America was cool because it was like a whole other wizarding world. Yeah. And it's like, now that she's brought it back to Europe, it's like, now we're back to the Potter 
universe, essentially. Right. Yeah. And now you have to play by these other rules and with these other characters that we all know, sort of. Yeah. And they have to be in there for whatever reason, but they don't. It's like it would have been fine <laughs> without them. That, and this yeah. was my problem from the beginning, where it was like we didn't need the whole Grindelwald thing. Yeah. Unless that's the story you wanted to tell. Fine. Then after Newt has his fun adventures with Beast, you got new characters that have to deal with Grindelwald. <laughs> yeah, they could have been introduced in Newt's movie too. That would have been fine. Sure. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying because I like Eddie Redmayne and I like the character of Newt. Yes. Yeah. He's he's fun wizard doing cool stuff with beasts. I like it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but it just doesn't work in these this movie particularly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. And I suppose I guess that's supposed to be the kind of the idea is because he's you know he's very Hufflepuff esque and you know the smallest people can make the biggest changes. He doesn't want to be an R, but he clearly can fight the dark powers. Well then, you know. here here's my fix for it. Okay. So movie one, yeah, is about Newt Scamander in America finding beasts. Sure, America beasts. American beasts. Yeah. And some stuff happens. Whatever. He still meets the same characters. Yeah, like, I still like the plot with the kid and the, the, the yeah, smoke yeah. monster, but I just didn't like the Grindelwald part. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, that's all the same. Sure. So then, movie two is, he's gone back to Britain. Mm -hmm. He's, like, locked up there or whatever. Sure. Similar situation. Yeah, similar Not situation. Not to anymore. Tina's in horror. Yeah. Grindelwald gets sent back and escapes between... Um, America and Britain. Which is what we saw in the beginning Which of Which is movie. what we saw in the beginning yeah. of the movie. Tina and Queenie and Jacob, or Tina, or whatever. Mm. Tina's going off to go, she's one of the orders that go to find him. Sure. And she meets up with Newt again. Newt can be <laughs> in this movie. I just sure. fixed it. Yeah. I don't know. There's just, there's... Yeah, because it's implied that Tina went to Paris to track down Credence. But was that the ministry's choice or her own choice? <sighs> Fuck, who knows what's yeah, going like on it's, with we're her. Never, we're never told if she's like, oh, I'm on official business, or it's just like, I'm an order, and orders can do some investigating on their I own. I feel like Tina only had like five lines. She did not have a lot of that. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, she's like, oh, I got a lead on something, and that, that's okay to go investigate. Yeah. Or because they're wizard cops or whatever, they're yeah. going to go do what they want. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's giving me a headache. Yeah. <coughs> well, and just that opening scene, like I was saying, I was, I was, so, I, as you may or may not know, I'm a hater on 3D, so we had to see this movie in 3D, because that was the only showtimes available, and so immediately I was kind of like, ugh, because one, the colorization sucks in 3D, yeah. two, they do annoying stuff because the, for the sake of it, and this opening sequence it's this carriage with the thresholds, and they're transporting them away, so they think. Turns out, oh, it's a double. Yeah. Uh, which, that always, that's been bothering me in these How two movies. How do they movies. switch? Yeah, in this movie and the previous one, the only time we've seen people be able to change is when they use Polyjuice Potion. But for some reason, he can just look like anyone he wants. Oh, he is the Elder Wand. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and I would be fine if they introduced illusion magic in the Harry Potter stuff, but they never do. No. They never talk about, oh, you can you can change the way you want to look. No, they never talk about that. Listen, Dan, <laughs> the Elder Wand is yeah. the most wandiest wand that ever It's quite wand. true, it is. But it, my point was, okay, and then this opening it's sequence... It's a wand from death. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This opening sequence is all close-up CG shaky cam, and you can't even tell what's happening. Yep. At all, they're in this cloud and it and it's all full of lightning and I was like, wow, this would look so cool if I could tell what was happening. Yep. <laughs> there's there's but it's there's dark. Yeah, there's wizards on broomsticks and none of them react when he starts killing them all. They're all no. like, oh, that guy fell off the cart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the shit happens, you know, when you're in the wizarding world. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, and then the, the, he just, like, but I was, uh, I, immediately I was just kind of like, oh no, this movie is just going to be a nightmare to watch. Fortunately, it smoothed out. Yeah. But this opening sequence, but I, I like did 90% feel of like it, I couldn't tell what was happening. <laughs> everything with the cat dragon was a little bit like, hey, we need to... Oh yeah, the tail in your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the cat dragon's look and everything. Oh no, me and... too. But it was just like oh, yeah. sometimes when you're watching it because of the tail. Yeah. It made it hard to watch it. Yeah, like if you imagine 
any kind of Chinese dragon that has this long, super long tail. This was like a cat attached to that, so it was just like this tail is waving everywhere and smashing things. This is a cat attached to a dragon. A cat, cat, they's, dragon tail. They just tied a cat to a yeah. dragon. No, and like I said, I I like the look of it and everything, and I was okay with its tail, but I could definitely, it was just like always yeah. constantly like in your face just because. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's in 3D, and I'm like, yeah, how annoying. <laughs> <coughs> <Very neat. laughs> so I was, uh, I was worried, but uh, I thought, again, the visuals in this movie were pretty top-notch, and all of the magicking stuff is, is super top-notch. We can depict that stuff so cool now. And I just wish just they crazy. would have taken two thirds of the stuff out of it. Sure. Again, the, and this was probably uh, and like my main complaint of the first one was just more streamlined. Yeah. Just like, like tone it down. Your world is great. Streamline this story down so it makes less sense. Less characters or <laughs> yeah. something. I don't know. It seems like all of this stuff was good ideas if yeah. they had stretched it out over the five movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If they had stretched out Lita and Newt's brother's relationship. Right. It's just like, when you're going to sacrifice a character, it hurts more. Like, it Mm. affects the audience more when there's a reason to care. Yeah, because when they mentioned, kept on mentioning the the Lestrange, and I was trying to picture the Lestranges I know from the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but how does she relate to all this, <laughs> essentially? And I was like, do we know she's dead? Do we care that she's going to die? <laughs> like, Yeah. I was like, uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> so. who, who's the other strange is uh, Bellatrix. Bellatrix and her, she has a brother. And Narcissa is the other strange. And Narcissa is the other strange. And then Andromeda is the other one, right? Is it? Okay. Yeah. So they don't have a brother? Maybe they don't. I thought there was a there was oh, a brother. Oh, do they have a brother? I thought there was a brother. I They're... thought Bellatrix and, and like and her brother were like the Death Eaters, and Narcissa was just like, "I'm married over here. Leave me alone." Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I could totally be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. But I know, yeah, like you said, I I I can only remember the two. There might be a third. And no, I is. think there was three sisters. Okay. I think it was Bellatrix. That would make sense. Narcissa and Andromeda. I mean, you know, s- story wise. Yeah. Like. Myth wise, yeah. there'd be three witches. <laughs> right. um, and then their cousins with the blacks, right? Yes. Like serious black. With serious black, yeah. Yeah. But because, like you say, I was like, I, I okay. And then she just, I, I thought she was going to go with them. And I was like, oh, that'll be a neat turn. And then in the next movie, maybe she has some doubts. And, yeah. You know, then they could do something. I don't know. Uh, she's, just, she's dead. Pawn sacrifice. Pawn sacrifice. Because <laughs> they were trying to get away anyway. So. Did she die though? Yeah, she got, like, incinerated by the blue fire. I don't know if I blinked and I missed that. Yeah, it was very quick. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who died by that blue fire was just, like, instant murder. Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> well, and then it was funny because I was, with the whole time when I was just like, uh, you just do your magic and get away, and then those two orders try and just get incinerated, and I was like, okay, that was cool. That was cool, yeah, <laughs> yeah I liked I was, that. I was like, that was, that, okay. The, you know, it was like Grindelwald still had the, uh, no, you didn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> you tried to get away, and boom. <laughs> I showed you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's There was a lot of wasted potential in this movie. It's interesting, because, again, I, I thought the... Again, maybe I'm just because, like, I thought the tone was perfect. The tone was, was good. Was I'll good. That. So and the, so it raised it above me for the from the first movie, but I I um. I feel like okay. I think it's just, in the first movie. Yeah. It is absolutely heartbreaking when Jacob. Yeah. Has to go out in the rain that's going to obliviate him. Yes. And it's because we've spent the whole movie with Jacob. Um, we've learned about his hopes and dreams. Yeah, we understand him. He's got a friendship with Newt, and Newt doesn't make friends easy, so that matters. Yeah. He's kind of developed a relationship with Queenie, who he thought was out of his league or whatever. Sure. But she sees the good in him, so that matters. And it's, like, a big deal. And as audience members, we care because we're like, we're no matches. Yeah. You can't take that away from <laughs> us. Yeah. And it And it's, like, heartbreaking because you're like, oh, man, I totally, I don't, it's like when Donna become in, um, in, uh, blah, 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 Doctor Who. Mm, yeah. When Donna becomes... <laughs> Comes the do- uh, a doctor. A doctor. A time lord. A yeah. time lord, and then he has to take it away from her yeah. to burn her up and kill her, but she's just not going to remember. Yeah. And, like, as he's doing it, she's like, I don't want to go or yeah. something like that, right? That's heartbreaking. Yeah. 
heartbreaking. But when it's like <laughs> this movie, every like they they rapid fire. Yeah, they just rush through everything. Sacrifice three <laughs> characters that you should give a damn about. Yeah. They sacrifice. They they split up Nagini and Credence, mm-hmm. which should matter but doesn't. They split up Jacob and Queenie, which should matter but doesn't. <laughs> and they kill off Letta, which yeah. should matter but doesn't. Yes. That's my biggest, like, it's just, that to me is wasted potential. Mm -hmm. Because one of those could have been heartbreaking if it had been paid attention to properly. And three of them, like, just doing more didn't make it matter. Right. Yeah, and I I think that's a a lesson that seems to be lost in the general movie making that sometimes less is more. It would be like in, in book five... Right, book five is when Sirius dies. Yes, or the Phoenix. Yeah, so... Which I still was always so annoyed at in the movie, how quick it is. <laughs> yeah, okay, so like, instead of Sirius dying, if, like, Sirius, Neville, and then, I don't know, someone else had yeah. fucking died one after the other, like, it wouldn't have mattered as much, right? right? I don't know. That's what I think. No, it's an interesting... Uh... Interesting thought, and you're, yeah, you're, it's or no, no, no. That's a that's a bad comparison. If Sirius died, mm. and they had introduced two other characters <laughs> who were related to Harry Potter and could have offered him a family, right? But we'd only met them in the last half hour. <laughs> Both of they them died. Sure. Yeah, that's what. That's a better comparison. I, and again, I I think I was saying this earlier. How it was like the flashbacks with Leda didn't help the story yeah there was just too many too many of these characters too much going on that it was like i think they could have worked if there was another flashback where her and newt had yeah broken split out. yeah right yeah, they were like, because like you've built their relationship you need a flashback where because otherwise you're like well why aren't they just together yeah why aren't they friends still yeah like, <laughs> like what happened yeah yeah. Why doesn't he want to go over to their house? Like, what happened? Like, especially if they had split and it had been a situation that Newt clearly didn't understand why she was picking him, his brother over him or well, something. Or, like yeah, because it, it was it was probably heavily implied that he probably still, um, well, he still liked her. And then it was like, oh, I don't want to be around them when they're getting married, etc. Yeah, yeah, that would have been fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or maybe, yeah, yeah, something. Just something. something. We needed something. Yeah, and I guess that's... And we needed less than every yeah. of everything else. Well, and it's an unfortunate thing because, other, uh, yeah, there is a lot of potential there that was unfortunately not built upon, and maybe because it's rushed in the sense that they want to get to these bigger stories, bigger battles, bigger things. Yeah, I get it. It's like, but... It was also like, if we had spent time with Aletta... You then know, her storyline would have mattered. That's what I'm saying here is that maybe they could have dialed back some of the Grindelwald stuff. Yeah. Beefed up all these other storylines. Then in the next movie, you do all these splits. Yeah. And Grindelwald really come into the fore- like, to the forefront. Like if this movie had just been about finding Credence. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then at the end, they found him. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. And then, yeah, you could have seen him and Nagini doing some, going on some journeys. Yeah. Some adventures. Actually and, forming a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's like, oh, when in the escape, she's like, oh, my cage broke open, take me with you. And he's like, no, I want to be on my own. But, you know, they it, something happens, so they have to yeah. go away together. You can yeah. write that kind of thing. And then, yeah. Uh, and then if they, they had given us some of, like, Jacob and Queenie reuniting. Yeah. And then her just, like, slowly becoming unhinged because hearing other people's thoughts was whatever. Give us a one-line reason. I don't care what Well, it I'm is. thinking, yeah, that maybe it's, like, because... Um, She's more open to Jacob that it's like opening her up to her mind yeah, more to other people, go. and then so it's like messing with her head more. Yeah, kind of totally. Thing. That yeah. would have been acceptable if yeah. we had a little bit more of that. Um, if we had some like actual explanation about Leta and, <laughs> yeah. and and Newt and his brother and that weird love triangle. Mm. If we had some downtime just with Newt and his assistant that he hired, Gertie. Yeah. Yeah, like maybe he, he some some more stuff happens in Britain, and then he so he goes back yeah. there a couple times. Maybe like 
some interaction between Newt and his brother and Letta, like them actually asking him over and yeah. him as finding a reason not to or and talking about it with Gertie or I don't know, whatever, yeah. right? Like we could have maybe we have some like some just some cool action scenes of Tina That's what I say. looking for credence. Yeah, doing some horror stuff. Doing some horror stuff, yeah. right? Maybe meeting this other or and like reforming a really yeah him. I really feel it was weird considering that they were like having all these things with all these people instead and, of being and her, like and her boyfriend guy isn't around yeah like oh I have a boyfriend he's in Canada he's really hot <laughs> <laughs> he can't come here because he's Canadian <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that that one that definitely threw me for like I was like, where's this other guy? Yeah, because huh. when she was at the circus, I was like, oh, maybe it'll be the two of them together. No, nope. and they'll do something. I thought the black guy was her boyfriend. I remember it too, and I was like, that doesn't seem right, and then yeah. it wasn't. But yeah, <laughs> but like, so we could have just like had that be a little bit more flushed out. Yeah, maybe if you really want to include Mr. Depp, you can have some like. Him kind of starting to yeah, so saying some groupies yeah, or whatever. meeting some people, starting some plots, but then he's still not in the movie. Like even this, the scene when they show up at the house and he's like, "Okay, this will be a good base to start." Yeah, cool. And then you know he sends out some minions, and then he talks to a couple people, but not him doing stuff yet. Yeah, or him like because yeah, even you just know what? Show him reading a book so that we can be like, "Oh, that's why he knows that this yeah. is a Dumbledore." Sure. Well, and that was We're just, doing some magic scurrying or something. And, and again, it, maybe it's... Because, <coughs> you me. know, the wizard world and the muggle world are separated. But he's just walking down the street Yeah. before they go into that house. I think maybe we were in the washroom at the time. Or maybe we were No, there. I saw him um, watch a coffin get literally... Right. Literally. No, this was before that. He's, like, literally walking down the street. And I was like, isn't he, like, a brazenly wanted criminal? Like, nah. no. <laughs> and he doesn't look like just normal guy he's yeah. like pale blonde hair weird weird, weird eyes <laughs> that's normal and I was like what is this Dan he's got the elder one right well and I <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's what I'm thinking here might be the the, the, the way that could have gone was yeah he sets up his base he gets some stuff starting and then you dial his story back beef up everybody else's so it all makes sense we're in the next movie when they have to start breaking and making decisions and yeah. whose side because that was the wasn't that the whole touted thing about the crimes of Grindelwald it's like whose side are you on rah, rah, rah. yeah and it was this it was just like I don't know and, but I don't care who, who's, whose side anyone's on <laughs> yeah I don't even know what the other side is yeah <laughs> It's just not Grindelwald? Is that it? I assume, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like it's Grindelwald, Grindelwald versus not, not Grindelwald. Him. And then, but we don't, we, you know, we, uh, it's, like, it I makes sense even... for a, a charismatic leader type guy to have vague it's speeches. Like, <laughs> I don't know what his position was, honestly. Well, was, and that's what I was saying. Except that's that, normal. like, uh, World War II is going to be is bad. Yeah. Well, and I think, yeah, and he was like, spread the word about we're not the aggressors and the, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, he's saying how the humans are the the barbarians, as it were. And the wizards can rule over benevolently. Oh, I thought he meant we're not the aggressors in the case of... The Aurors. The well. Aurors, yeah. It was double, but I think he was talking more about humanity. I he's disagree. All like, he's all like, we can rule them benevolently. Yeah. Well... Because they're the other and... We are the better. We're there, our puppets. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the beasts of burden, as he says at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh... Yeah. Hmm. It's in... <laughs> It's interesting, and it's also, I think, one of my complaints was from the first film, was that there was just too how much does, going on. How do you feel about Mudblood, so... Well, uh, apparently it's always hinted that... No, yeah, because she... Um, when they go into the thing, they're like, these are all, like, pure bloods, and, like, they kill people like us. When he's talking huh. about Nagini and Credence, right. she says that, and it's like... Because they don't like Mudbloods either. Oh, I thought it was just because she's a snake lady. That as well, I assume. So they're like, oh, people. we're snake lady. Yeah. She got the curse of the... Snake lady. No, I think it's uh, they don't like the mudbloods. Because that's kind of where um, Malfoy gets it. Right. They think the pure bloods only should be the wizards. I just, you know. <laughs> I just don't know what happened in the movie. I think it's. It, <laughs> I feel like it's. And it, it, it could be. And again, I'm not the one making these decisions and I'm not there, but it's like, yeah. What was cut from the script and how could they have streamline the script to be better 
J.K. Rowling, like we've discussed before, she can write cool worlds and some cool characters, mm-hmm. but she's got too much going on for a movie. How, I agree. Then you got to bring somebody else in to help her <laughs> streamline this. <laughs> yeah, like we just did. <laughs> Basically. But we're unfortunately just two people JK, with a simple podcast. Bring us in. <laughs> bring us in to, to, we'll to consult. We'll fix movies three <laughs> through five. <laughs> we can't now. Movie <laughs> one was broken. <laughs> Because it's basically movie one of the new story. Yeah, that's true. Right? Like, movie Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, that was a whole other adventure. Like I said, this this movie has no end. It literally just ends in the most annoying way, <laughs> where you just, ah, oh, one mountain credits. And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I just wish that <laughs> we cared about some of the characters in this one. You know, every review I've heard about this so far has been, it's great, it's the really? best movie. Really? The opening scene is fantastic. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's all. But the only reviews I've seen are from YouTubers who have Harry Potter YouTube channels. Oh, ah, because I was about to say, I remember I saw a headline in The Sun, I think I want to say. Yeah. And they were like, oh, it's like a lot of magic, but something clever to be like, there's not enough there. Yeah. Basically, like a two star type review. Okay. Right. Was what they kind of. Yeah, I'd give rated. it a two star. What's yeah. it out of? I think it's five, their system. Yeah, two star. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I guess watch it, but. And again, I think it it's cool to go to the wizarding universe, uh-huh. and there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I like the old Harry, the old Hogwarts robes were cool. Yeah. In the flashback, they looked yeah. better than the ones in Harry Potter. I like the depiction of Hogwarts. Yeah. It looked like a cool castle that I'd like to go see. It still <laughs> looks like Hogwarts. I'm, no, that's what I mean. They got that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I like that. Uh, yeah, there was a lot to like. There was just. I a, liked um, uh, McGonagall's yeah. um, old outfit. Her like yeah. brat long brown <laughs> skirt with the crop jacket. Yeah. A little red tie and cream blouse. And that, well, and I was just saying, I think that's one of the problems though, is that it's because the prequel style or the universe is really cool. It's like these elements are better than the story elements that are unfortunately within it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, oh wow, that was so cool, cool magic effect, cool this, cool creature, cool everything. But we don't care about any of these characters. Except for maybe one. I kind of care about Newt. I care about Newt. Yeah, you know, care about Newt. But that's what I was saying. It's a blender story. It's a blender without a lid. It's too bad because I had had hopes for the second one that they were like, okay, she wrote that first one. She learned how to screenplay a little better. Nope. She could write this cohesive story for us. I feel like J.K. Rowling, when it comes to the Harry Potter universe is only going to get worse and not better because it's the um the star wars guy george lucas syndrome right <laughs> where it's like i am god right. you love my universe fuck you this is how it's always been <laughs> yeah end. even though it's in print previously that that's not what you said or meant yeah <laughs> no that was my idea the whole time no you yeah. didn't say that <laughs> well george lucas to be fair though he had a tough thing, because I'm a big fan of a lot of the Expanded Universe stuff. Yeah. Where it was so many clever people came up with so many cool ideas that it was like when he went back and wrote these other things where it was like, dude, you are, you're play, you're way below even the talent that these other people have written. Like, you use some of their ideas. <laughs> like No, no, totally. It's like, you own those ideas. <laughs> but I think that's what happens with J.K. Rowling is that, like, anytime the studio is going to get involved, she's going to be like, I'm... I'm JoJo. Yeah. I made this shit. You'd have nothing without me. I'm going to fucking walk right now and I'm going to take all my fans with me. Sure. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, I'm curious as to why she went, why she decided to write screenplays instead of just writing more books. I don't know. Cause she's crazy. Because it's like if she wanted to write these as a series of books. Oh, they would have been way better. They totally would have been way better. Yeah. It, it, they would 100%. And then you take those books. You get somebody else to come in and adapt it to do a movie. <laughs> hey, have you read Cursed Child yet? No. I oh my know. god. That's the, the play one, right? It's yeah. so bad. Yes, you it's were mentioning It's the worst. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah, well, and, and again... Apparently, if you watch it, though, it's a lot better. The actual play? Yeah, because I guess, like, they've... I don't know. They do all this kind of cool theater shit. That sure. Makes it okay. But the... the Screenplay or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, script yeah. is awful. 
Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm very curious as to why she decided to do that instead of writing books and then someone else making movies out of them, or her helping someone make movies out of them. I don't versus, know. like, because then it would establish the characters, and then you could learn what people didn't like or what you you were like oh i didn't like that idea i won't continue to write that or i can cut that from a movie because yeah. something like the spew stuff that's all cut from the movies in harry yeah, potter which God. Would, yeah that's great because it's annoying and you know stuff like that right where it's like in book form cool but you can streamline it mm-hmm. here's the movie boom so I mean, yeah i'm just curious about the thought process did they just if they just offered her a ton of money which is fine but she could have written the book and then just adapted it from there. Because <laughs> then, um, like I said, she could keep, keep have all these ideas in there, build up those relationships. richer than the queen. She doesn't need money. Yeah, she doesn't need money anymore. I understand that. She can yeah. do what she wants. But I'm just like, I... I again, what's, what's what Warner Brothers' connection that they just can't change the script into something more cohesive? <laughs> I think it's because she is... Has the- more control. No, I think it's, it's she's at the point where she's like, my ideas are golden. Yeah. Everything I say is perfect. <laughs> and fuck you. Well, maybe. Yeah. I think, I mean, like, how could you not be like that? Sure. Right? Well, yeah, if you were that rich. If, obviously no, no, but like, well, that too. But like, consider like, it's been 20 years of people just loving her books and mm. everything she does. Sure. I like how would you not have an ego after that? Yeah, but I just mean like how would you, yeah, I guess. Like but the reality it, it would actually be egotistical to not listen to people at that point because there's so many people telling you you're like a god, yeah. right? But I just mean cuz the first movie has its criticisms. You learn, yeah. don't you? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> you don't. Yeah, I guess. You're J.K. Rowling. You do what you want. You well, or I say, or it's modern, modern movie making where, it's so far, unless you're Marvel, you just do what you want and it doesn't matter, and the movie still makes $600 million. Yeah. Except for if you're DC. <laughs> um, and the fans are going to love it anyways. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what like, she knows. That's, right? what I'm, that's what I'm saying. The studios know. They they're just, like, it doesn't matter. They just want wizard shit. Yeah, they just want. But, yeah. So. I'm sure there, there's going to be, like, a Marauders um, prequels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm a fan of the Harry Potter books. We we, just, we did an episode about it. I, I wouldn't mind um, a prequel book or movie about the founding... Yeah, we were talking about that. Hogwarts yeah. friends. Yeah. Whatever they're called. Just the founders. Yeah. The founders of Hogwarts. Yeah. And them deciding to come together and found Hogwarts. Sure. And then and then them sitting around and being like, I'm going to make a house that's full of all the cunning people. I'm going to make a house that's full of all the brave people. I'm going to make a house that's full of all the smart people. <laughs> I'm going to take the rest. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> true, true. And our, our animal will be... Badger. <laughs> hey, honey badgers. Hey, no. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, like I said, I'm a, f- I'm a big fan of the previous Star Wars Expanded Universe, just to go back to that, because it's a similar thing. Mm-hmm. Where, But there are other authors that were writing in yep. this universe. In this, it's just her. And Unless like you, you want to get some Harry Potter fan fiction, well, which yes. is mostly about Harry and Draco kissing, right? Because they were in love. Yeah, sure. Sexual tension. <laughs> sure, but I was say like when there's these other ideas, they bring in other, <coughs> other ideas, other world points, other viewpoints, and yeah. other things. Like even when we were spitballing our joking idea about like Canadian wizards and stuff like that, right? Like I still want that. Yeah, like that'd be cool. And yeah. it'd be, like it's a, it could be some neat books about that, but uh, Canuck wizards. <laughs> she unfortunately is the sole voice at the moment and sole controller of it. Yeah, and she will be until she dies. Yeah, I think it, it sums it up perfectly now that I'm thinking about it. That it's like all these cool elements are super cool. And it's all cool wizarding stuff, but the story parts aren't living up to the wizarding parts. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Because it, it is unfortunate because uh, 
Jacob's character from the previous movie. I, I liked him. I wanted to see his conti- story continue. Me too. Tina and Newt. Queenie, I was, like, lukewarm about, but it was fun. It was yeah. a cool interaction with her, with, with Jacob. And, um, like I said, I thought Creedence died, so I was kind of like, oh, yeah, he's still yeah. alive. Yeah. So that's cool. And then him and Nagini, that could have been a whole thing. And Nagini could have been a really cool character. Yeah, because I... If she was in the movie. <laughs> Before this movie came out, I had previously seen it, just a headline, because I tried to avoid spoilers, that it was like, people were like, ah, they cast this woman to be Nagini, and I was like, well, that's kind of a neat idea. She was a snake at some, or a woman at some point, became a snake somehow, something to do with Voldemort in the future. Yeah, and people then they explained were it. mad about her casting. Because she was Asian? Well, no, because she should have been Asian, but the, she was the wrong Asian. She was the, from the wrong country. Or something? I, yeah, again, I didn't read the article. <laughs> I don't know. Some people are like, oh, she's Indonesian and she should have been Indian. And then other people were like, no, Nagini means snake in Indonesian. And, right. And then the people are like, it's problematic that they made a, the lady a snake. <laughs> I don't know. No, I know. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, this is why I avoid such things. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand. Yeah. Period. Again, I, I think that uh, this could have worked better. Dial back a little bit of the Grindelwald, beef up the rest of the character stories. So in the next movie, when you go full Grindelwald, we care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add about this movie? I suppose after all the trash talking we've done in the last 45 minutes. Yeah. I still think it, would, it was a good, it's enjoyable watch. Hour. Well, we, we, still, we talked a little bit without trashing it in the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. I, I, now, I'm, it makes me curious to, in a, whatever it is, year or two, when the next one comes out, will they work better watching it one after the other, in a sense? Because this one does not go with the first one. Oh, uh, yeah. But will the next ones flow better? I don't know. Who knows? It, the, only the future will know. <laughs> only the future can tell. Only future me will know. Or Flamel's crystal ball, apparently. <laughs> It'd be cool if they just used a plot device to, like, narrow it down the characters. Yeah. Like, if they had somebody snap their fingers and half of them <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think it's the wrong franchise. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What any final thoughts from you, sorry? I think I don't know what I think, man. Like I was disappointed. That's fair. I think there's a lot of wasted potential mm-hmm. in characters and story. Hmm. Um, but if you wanna see some cool flashing lights and some magic magic mm. I don't know, go see it, I guess. Yeah, it's curious as well. It's not a waste of money no, for that reason. But we just saw it. It just came out. And our theater was like eight people. Yeah, but we did go see it in a VIP. In a noon show. But still. In a noon like, show, yeah. There was only eight people in there. I saw Free Solo, which is a documentary about climbing, on Saturday at 2 p.m. And it was literally sold out. Yeah. And it's like, this is this is the big new I did race. expect it to be busier, but VIP is more expensive. Um, I guess, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe. Highly recommend, by the way, seeing movies in VIP. It's kick-ass. Yeah. <laughs> they don't let children in, for yeah, starters. That's also a plus. Right? You have to be 19 or over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I continued to ramble on there, but... Yeah. Wasted potential, unfortunately, in Devon's eye. In the, yeah, in that's that's what I... You know what? If you want to turn your brain off and just see some magic, mm. enjoy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was some, yeah. Some, good, some good magic stuff, as I said. Well, if you enjoyed our discussion, please like, follow, subscribe, and all that. We're on Instagram, uh, tomo underscore of uh, underscore uselessness. Website, tomo of uselessness. Dot com. Sure. Dot org. <laughs> dot org. Or you can just Google it. It'll come up. Tomeoflistenness.com. It's dot net. <laughs> Thanks for listening and join us next time. Bye. <laughs>